Hey, welcome to Goodwood. My name is Matt, and I saw this table in a vintage furniture collection online, and it's an, it was built by someone anonymous. There was no mark on it. This one's made out of teak and aframosia, but I'm making one out of maple and oak. So here we go. I'm cutting up my patterns. I drew a pattern with a little more angle than the original table had. Rough dimensioning my lumber. And this is quarter sawn white oak. Beautiful wood. First time working with it really, other than stuff I pulled out of pallets before. I need to give this some uh, audio here. Planning the edges, I need a flat edge. It's my Lee Nielsen uh, low angle jack. And it, it works amazingly well on oak, on any wood really. Here I am laying out parts. And I will soon be cutting them on the table saw. Right now I'm making the base. I have an idea for the top. It's, uh, I have a bunch of tiger maple that I'm gonna glue up. But as you'll see in later steps here, that changes. Here I am laying out the tenons for directly underneath the tabletop. There's a couple short uh, stringer stretchers, I guess you could call them. So I saw it down with a handsaw, and then I take it over to the table saw, and I do it like this. And I get in a little groove here with that push stick. It's fun. <laughs> I don't like to take the time to install a dado blade. It'd probably go faster if I did, but I can, I can crank out some tenons on my table saw, even with a single blade. Here I am cleaning it up. Cleaning up the shoulder line and any fuzz you get from that, those, those teeth. And these are the uprights on the table base, the sides. And here I am drilling out the mortises. I don't have a mortising machine. I can't justify it yet because I really like using chisels to chop mortises. I love it. And drilling just it gives you some clearance in the, in the mortise hole, as you'll see here. And you can just go to town with the, the proper width chisel. A little too tight on that one. So that's a Japanese float I bought. It's a little crank neck float. I think I got it at Lee Valley. But it works great for tuning up mortises and tenons. Cuts really nice if you're light with it. If you press too hard, it digs in and you're not gonna get it cut. You gotta go light with the floats. Here I'm fitting this tenon, making sure everything's kosher. A little more uh, floating right there. See my Bob Marley shirt if you're quick enough. And here I'm shaping the uprights on the table base. They're mortised already, as you see. Some funky video going on. I think I sped that one clip up too much. Here we go. One of my favorite tools ever is an RU Rasp. They cut so nice, so quickly. I think this is a number 10. No, that, that's a number 8. I'll have to check. <laughs> I have an 8 and I have like a 13. And they're about 10 inches long. The one's, the one's 12. The big one's 12 inches long. The other one's 10 inches long. And see I'm shaping those inside curves with the rasps. Now I'm going to cut the piece that rides along the bottom here. It's going to be through tenoned and pinned on the outside. It's like a trestle type deal. 
on that lower horizontal. But that's what the shape of it's going to be. This is a little rat tail fowl I found in an old warehouse working construction. And I took it home and I finally put a handle on it and it works great. And it's the perfect radius for a lot of the stuff I build. Here I'm cutting square sticks to make dowels from. And I sharpen one end, and you'll see why in a second. I use my pencil sharpener, my pencil sharpener is probably mad at me sticking that oak in there. But here's the dowel plate. It has a quarter inch hole drilled in it. I have a hole in my bench, I line those up. And I stick the sharpened pencil in, and bam, you got an oak dowel. It's really fun making these. And here I'm sharpening the dial plate, and you do that by leveling the top. And it creates a new cutting I'm surface. Draw these. I'll do one on camera. Here I'm drilling the frame for some dowels for those dowels. Drill the mortise side first, assemble, mark where your hole comes through dead center. Now this is a center punch set. Find the quarter inch, same size as your dowel hole. And that'll give you your exact center point of your mortise. And then you'll be able to move the hole in the tenon in towards the shoulder. Like I do here. And I do the, the upper one there off camera so I can glue them at the same time. The upper mortise. And it'll jump to that, you'll see a a dowel hole up here. <laughs> there's my little offset uh, now shoulder there's a in there. Shoulder in there that'll suck the tenon this way into the mortise. Make sure your dowel. And I was kind of I've never draw board anything before this this uh, table build, but it works amazingly well. Don't be scared of it. You can do it. Just don't offset your hole too much, and you're in business. You're fitting the dowel. As you see, that upper mortise is now drilled, or the upper, upper dowel hole. All he needs is a little line of glue. It'll all spread out when you shove it in there. And you want to pin it. Time to pin the joint. Beautiful. Had a little bit of an issue there. The wood was pinching the blade and the riving knife. So I had to flip that board over, keep the same side against the fence and push it through. Here I am trimming up the tenon with my low angle rabbiting block plane. It's a great tool. If you build a lot of furniture, you should get one. It'll save your ass. Using a router plane to get it precisely the same depth or the same width thickness. Here we go, sawing the double tenons on the bottom stretcher, the only stretcher in this base. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Plane in the base flat and I don't show it but I do put a round over on all the parts here quarter inch round over drilling out the mortises for the double tenons on the stretcher And 
and chopping them accurately, fitting them up. It's one of the only times you'll see me wearing shorts in my life. I'm usually a jeans and a t-shirt kind of guy. Unless I'm swimming. Here we go. That's it. Now it's time to find a tabletop for this sucker. And I found this maple slab under my drill press table. I bought it when I first started woodworking. I got a good deal on it. I think it was 10 bucks for that, believe it or not. Big hard maple slab. And right now I'm making it so that it sits evenly on that base all around. I want it to touch that base on every bearing surface. I got a gap over here and no gap here, so this side needs to come down so that it all sits flush. So I mark out where the supports go and then I build a router sled. And that's it right there. And I chew out some wood so it sits flat and basically level. That board that I'm cutting there is really, it's, it's not really twisted, but it's twisted. And I like that. You may be able to tell from this shot. Here I am shaping the edges of the tabletop, putting some angles on them. It looks really good. You'll see it at the end of the video here. And I had to pull out the handsaw. There we go. And I flip the tabletop over and cut an angle the other way, I believe. And maybe not yet. Yep, there it's flipped over. Now I'm cutting a top angle on it on a different side. And I jump to this. Pre finished all the parts. That is uh, dyed shellac on that base. And here I'm fitting wedge tenons. See how there's a little gap on the outsides of those tenons? That's just enough to allow clearance for those wedges to be hammered in there. Those are ebony wedges. I think I have a shot of me shape. See my plane clamped upside down in the vise there? That allows me to fine tune those wedges without trying to hold it awkwardly. Okay, there was a, there was a big four inch strip of spalting on the top of this slab and I wanted to get it off of there because it wasn't defined. So I scraped the whole thing basically. I mean, I don't show it here, but this is hours of work. Hours just to get it to this point here. And there's more hours of me shaping it and sanding it after. I don't show any sanding in these videos because I really don't like to sand a lot, but on this slab, it was necessary. There was no way I was touching it with hand planes because it's all cattywampus and out of whack. It's not flat. It would take me about five extra hours if I wanted it flat. And I liked the weirdness of it. Here I am hand planing with a, uh, that's a Mujing Fang Jack plane. It's a fantastic plane once you get it set up right. Scraping and planing the edges here. Got one coat of poly on this. And I'm taking a brown paper bag to knock down the dust. Don't use sandpaper, it'll goof you up. About to put our second coat of poly on here, and it's looking good so far. But there were some rough spots where the grain busted through the finish, and that's what this takes care of. Here's the finished table in its final resting place. It looks great in this room, it really does. Uh, it looks way better than my old table. Uh, there are some things I learned here, mainly is to take my time when finishing these pieces. I could have had this done a week and a half ago, 10 days ago, but I spent 10 days getting the perfect finish. This is three coats of Danish oil, then three coats of polyurethane. And I'm glad I took time to do it right because it looks incredible. Another thing is sometimes an odd shaped slab like this one looks better than that perfect symmetrical table, which is what I originally had planned for the top. I built the top out of tiger maple. It was beautiful. It's downstairs. But uh, 
I saw this sitting under my drill press table. I'm like, now's the time. Because it fit perfectly for the base I had. This base here. I said, now's the time to use this slab. So I busted it out. It added an extra at least two or three weeks to the project. But I'm glad I went for it. Because look at that. Anyway, if you like projects like this, and you like tips about woodworking and building and making, please subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'm just getting started and there's much more to come. Thanks.